Beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World. Hopefully, I didn't like, make myself look a little too orange for you guys today. I know how I can instill some fear in some of you. But anyways, guys, today we're going to be looking at the Future Ray Reverb. Now, I've made a variation of this video before called the WNW Effect or the WNW Reverb, which is exactly the same thing. It's just making a comeback, and I think it sounds awesome anytime these kind of things come up. Now, the basics of this tutorial, guys, is simple. You're going to have a lead. You're going to insert it into a return track, and then from there, that lead's going to go into a reverb. From there, you're also going to route that lead into a compressor in front of the reverb to duck the reverb whenever the lead plays. So you can have a bunch of reverb going off without the sound drowning. Think of it as sort of as having like a three-way, a threesome. So and with that being said, guys, if you want to support the channel, you can head over to evilsounds.com. I'm currently having a Black Friday sale. If you're on the email list, 50% off. And if you're not, 40% off. So my VIP, guys, just so you can get the word of Jesus sent, uh, hopefully I can strike down, uh, then you guys get an extra 10%. Uh, and I'll make sure to have my wife send out those codes for you guys later today for those of you guys that have been asking. With that being said, let's get straight into this tutorial. All right, guys, so here I have the 3 a.m. Walmart version, and I call it that because it's not 100% identical, but it's better than Dollar Tree, which is what a lot of these FLP remakes seem to sound like. So uh, we're just going to play this so you can kind of see how it sounds like. So it's not the Gucci. Uh, God damn that fucking reverb, man. We gotta put like a gate on it so that it turns off. In fact, that's that's another thing maybe we can add. You know, now it's a foursome. So we can just come in with like a little gate to shut that damn reverb off when it doesn't need to be there. Okay. So anyways, guys, pretty simple. Honestly, if you've watched any tutorial about this and get out of the video, you already know what to do. Uh, the sound itself, I'll make sure to make a tutorial on it for those of you guys that are interested. Uh, it's going to be in the new future rave pack called it three Detroit 3 a.m. In essence, it's just a bunch of saws. The pack is like 18 saws, one cowboy. So, um, so yeah, let's get a little bit into this. So the way we can route this, guys, is simple. You know, a lot of you guys like to run effect racks in your in your synth. For instance, this guy here. Okay, and that's totally fine. You're creating a return track in itself. So if you watch that cashmere tutorial, it's the exact same thing. It just looks a little prettier because you don't need to be creating a bunch of return tracks uh, that will mess this thing up. So from here, you're going to have a reverb that will come first. Now, here you can make any reverb you want. So if you're the type of guy like that just wants to be like, you know, I make everything fucking unique, man. I have a unique fucking reverb. Then you all fucking put, you put your own damn reverb in there. It could be any style. It could be whatever you want it to. But there is one thing. You do want to have a high decay time on it. You can always tame it with a gate, as you're going to see right now. From there, the key to this is now going to be to use a compressor. And this is where it gets a little bit professorship because we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this as well. So we're going to route it to our lead. So that way, every time the lead plays, the volume will get reduced on the reverb or it will get compressed. <laughs> straightforward as you can see let's put that damn gate in there so that shuts that shit off now from here there's a lot of things we can get into here i would have ended a tutorial but there's very very crucial things here that you have to pay attention to and that is going to be the knee your attack your release and the ratio just infinite to one let's noob it up there uh you can definitely put it lower it's just gonna um reduce volume not as much uh but again we want heavy heavy reducement Okay, now this is where it gets clutch. First off, the attack and the release on the compressor do fucking matter, all right? They do. I think I need to go outside and hold up a sign. Um, and the reason for that is that the release is going to decide how fast that reverb's going to come back in after the reverb isn't, or sorry, after the lead is, is done playing. Okay, so if I have a high release, check out what happens. <laughs>
It's a little smoother. However, if I run this at at 13. Now, whenever you have a compressor and you're compressing or doing whatever, if you run a very low release, you're gonna you, you always run the risk of, of the compressor like creating artifacts. So you can kind of hear that. So this is where you can get very creative with it because the reverb you can control it. All right, so you can see kind of like a higher release will give you that. Now, the attack is the opposite. It's going to be when it starts. So if you don't want the reverb to duck away too fast, you still want, to, want it to linger a little before it gets pushed down, then, of course, you give it a bit of attack. Now, from here, guys, the gate is also going to play a huge role if you don't want the reverb to fucking be around. In all honesty, all I say is get rid of the damn channel. Turn it off when you're not using it, like, let's say, on the drop, etc., before you go into it. Or you can automate the volume if you want it to bleed into the drop to create some atmosphere for you, which is another great thing as well. Okay. With that being said, guys, I have made a tutorial on the Ableton reverb. If you're into, you, you want to get into it and make it sound a distinct way, uh, you can check that video out. I don't want to get into it into this video because it will be too long. But I just want to make this quick video for you guys on how to achieve the future rave reverb. Again, you can run any reverb you want. You can run any compression you want. You can even run LFO to and get it triggered via MIDI, etc. But at the end of the day, these are the basics. As long as you have a, 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 a plugin that's creating reverb for you, as long as you have a compressor that's ducking for you, and then you don't really need that gate. It's just there for me. Um, then you should be ready to go with this. From there, if you need sounds, Future Rave Pack will be coming out at the mid-December, I want to say. I want to make this pack as best as I can. I've already filled it up with a bunch of really nice presets for you guys to utilize. But again, the problem with me is that I try to be too much of a perfectionist. But I guarantee you guys, the sounds in this pack are going to be meant for you. That being said, you guys take care. You guys have a great Thanksgiving if I don't see you by then. And peace out.